In this video, I will explain how Convolution works. Say you have an input image that looks like this. Then what we can do is this image can be, in terms of a NumPy array or representing in Python, this image can be something like, this could be 1024 by 1024 pixels. And this image may be further broken down into red, green, and blue channels, red, green, and blue channels. So effectively, what this image comes out to be as a NumPy array is a 1024 by 1024 by three channel input volume. So this becomes a volume. The first one is red channel, the second one is green channel, and the last one is blue channel. Now, because this image is very big, because we have 124 pixels by 124 pixels, for simplicity and to understand how convolution works, what I'm going to do is chop out a small piece, which will be a five by five input from the original image. So say, for example, maybe this corner from the input image. And also for simplicity, I'm only going to take two out of these three channels. Now this five by five by two channeled piece of the image, so this becomes the piece of the image, we can refer as the input feature map. In fact, the original 1024 by 1024 by three, this volume, is the actual input feature map. But for simplicity, we're looking at a smaller portion of this image so we can understand how convolution works. Now this five by five by two input volume, here you can see that this is a, can, be, can be represented uh, uh, using this cube, um, using this uh, volume that we see here. So this has uh, five pixels on one side, one, two, three, four, five, five pixels on the other side, one, two, three, four, five, and then two channels as the input. So this is the actual input image, we can say. Image input. And uh, the number of channels in the input that we consider is the input depth. In this case, input depth is only two. Now this is the width of the input and this is the height of the input. Now with this input, we can imagine this input um, a volume uh, let's say considering the depth as a channel not of our focus but height and width then we can break this down into say three by three pieces of the input so for example maybe this three by three piece including the entire depth can be one piece so this is one um, piece of the input volume that we have say if we take another input volume um, like this here, uh, not that one, this one with uh, the next three by three piece, then this becomes the second piece of the input volume. And then if we move one more step, then the last piece of the input becomes this piece right here, and then this is the other piece. In this way, I could take out one more piece on this side, one more piece from here, and then the input would break into many pieces. So we can, let's say for example, we're looking at only the three pieces on this side, then we can number them, let's say one, two, three. We can see that there's of course a lot of overlap between these pieces. For example, this area right here is same as this area here, and this area right here is same as this area here. Now to these input patches, to these input patches, what we do is, so these we call, for example, these are three by three input patches. When we say three by three, it is important for you to note that we do not refer to the number of dimensions in the channels. That is, the number of channels, which is in this case two, we don't consider that as a big deal because depending upon how you frame the input image, um, you could have uh, either one channel, three channels, or sometimes more. For example, if this picture was a black and white image, then your input depth would be only equal to one. That is, your number of input channels in the input image would only be one if it was 
black and white image. Now, going back to our situation where you have broken the image down into various patches or various pieces, what happens next is, say if you want to apply a 3x3 three three convolutional filter, then this would have typically nine values, right? So this is a 3x3 three three filter. We multiply this filter with each of these patches one by one. So patch one, we first multiply, multiply with patch one, and then multiply with patch two, and so on. Now you can see that immediately, even though this is a three by three filter, three by three filter, the problem that we have is, whereas this input patch that we have, the input patch that we have is three by three by two, but the filter that we have, the filter is three by three by one. So how can we multiply a three by three by two patch with a filter that's of size three by three by one? So for this reason, even though our filter is three by three, in order to match the number of channels in the input patch, this filter automatically grows, or we have to actually grow it so that the number of channels in the filter also become two. So for this reason, now this filter also, even though it is, a, it is a still a three by three filter, but the dimensions of this filter actually becomes three by three by two. So this is a still a three by three filter, but any filter of, of a given size has to match the number of channels in the previous input. So for this reason, we increase the number of channels to two. This means now this filter actually has three by three times two number of parameters total. Of course, plus one bias is always there. So now what happens is we multiply the filter with this patch, say patch number one, and you perform dot product with the kernel. In this case, kernel refers to the filter that we have, the three by three filter, and what comes out is one value. When you perform dot product of a, a three by three by two matrix with another three by three by two matrix, you get one value as the output. Similarly, if you have another filter, so this is the output of the first kernel, and then if you have another filter, you'll get the another output from the second kernel, second kernel, and this is another output from third kernel, and so on. So in this way, what you have is, depending upon how many filters you apply to this input patch, you will get as many number of values for this patch. Now the same filter, let's say for example, you had three filters and that's how we got these three values, one, two, and three values. We apply the same filter to the second patch as well. And we get again three values, one, two, and three values for the second patch. And we do the same thing for the third patch, we get another three values, one, two, three, and these values are the result of convolving, convolving, the three filters filters to this input patch three. Uh, so actually when we say convolve, what we mean is that we apply the filter to the entire input feature map. Now if we do this for the entire image, then what we get is a full output feature map. For example, in this case, here's our first output, three values by performing dot product using our kernel with the first batch, right? So these three values you can imagine to be a part of the output. This is one, two, and three values as it is from the first, um, the, uh, the output transformed patches that we have. The second set of three values make this portion of the output, one, two, and three values. And then these make the third column, one, two, and three values. Similarly, if we go up and if we look at the original um, input feature map, we can see that another piece may come out for another input. Say, for example, this one, we will have another output column and so on. So essentially what happens is your input feature map gets transformed into output feature map 
decided or this transformation is caused by this input kernels that you had. In this case, we used three kernels. Now, this, of course, the output feature map also has its own width. Say this is the width of the output feature map. And let's say this is the height of the output feature map. Uh, so this is the depth. And let's say this is the, uh, uh, let's say the height is over here, height of the input feature, output feature map. Then the width and height of this feature map, uh, it may be easier to write width on this side. The width and height of this feature map is, you can see that it's decided by the size of the filters that we have, the size of the kernels. Because if our kernel size was, let's say, five by five, then we would have to extract not three by three patches, but five by five patches. So the size of the patches defines, of course, there are other parameters too, but mainly the size of the input, the size of the filter decides the height and width of the output feature map. Now, the output depth, that is the number of channels in the output feature map, is decided by the number of kernels or the number of filters that we have. In this case, since we had three kernels, three filters, we got the output depth as three. Now, one of the common confusions is that if the input image, let's say, has only one channel and it is a black and white image, then that has no relationship with how many channels you would have in the output um, feature map. For example, here we have three channels. This is because the depth of the output feature map is completely defined by how many filters you use here. In this case, we use three filters. If we only had one filter, then the depth of the output feature map would only be one. Now, overall, thinking about the implementation of how convolution should be made to work. It's obvious to think that breaking the images down into so many different patches will be quite difficult. Instead, what we usually do is we keep the input feature map intact. That is, we don't break it down into various uh, input patches as we saw over here. Instead, we take this filter that we have, the three by three by X, size input volume and then we apply to the input that is we first take the filter to the first corner of the image do the dot product and then shift by a little bit do the dot product again shift by a little bit and then do the dot product again all the way from the top left corner scrolling down to the bottom right end of all the possible patches in the input image so during the time of implementation we actually don't have to break the input image but instead, we just write a for loop where we can convolve the filter, move the filter from the top left corner each time performing dot product, and then gradually moving down all the way to the end of the bottom right corner of the input image.